Today we're gonna talk about PC myths that you shouldn't believe. The new PureBase 500 from Be Quiet brings enthusiasts more of what they want at a price that they can afford. Two pre-installed PureWings 2 140mm fans ensure proper case ventilation, while insulation mats ensure quiet operation for the optimal balance of noise to performance. The spacious open layout design means there's plenty of room for airflow, but also plenty of room for custom water cooling loops with radiators up to 360mm in size. To see everything that the new PureBase 500 has to offer from Be Quiet, click the link in the description below. I don't know why, I've been watching a lot of Mythbusters lately on uh, you know, Discovery Channel, and man, do I love that show. I figured, you know what, there's a lot of myths out there regarding PCs. Now we've done a video like this in the past, but we've got new subscribers, we've got every single month, there's new people to the PC genre when it comes to building their first computers, buying it, getting into this sort of stuff. So this kind of content is always relevant. And to be honest, the myths are always kind of changing a little bit too with the times. So we're gonna go ahead and kick this off in no particular order, but these are things that you often will hear people say, but they don't really know what it is that they're saying. So rather than have people be super confused by hearing these things and, and believe them, I'm gonna try and give you some facts regarding some false myths. So we're gonna start it off here with me being a water cooling channel talking about something water cooling. And that is that since water cooled PCs run so much cooler, that means your room won't get as hot. That's a big bowl of malarkey. Because you have a bigger, stop face palming back there. <laughs> Because you have a much better and more efficient transfer of heat out of the component into the atmosphere via water and a radiator, what you'll find is that your room can often get hotter and faster. It, well, your room doesn't get faster, it gets hotter faster, is what I'm trying to say. Look, the amount of heat that's coming out of the components is the same. The amount of heat and TDP generated is the same. The difference is how, efficiency, how efficient it's making it from that piece to the atmosphere, which is the air inside of the space of which was responsible for cooling your components. So. Don't think that water cooling your PC is gonna make it run cooler. Well, it will, it won't make your room run cooler though. And as the room temperature goes up, believe it or not, your PC temp comes back up with it. So work on ventilating your gaming space as much as your PC. Now, a lot of people tend to think that if you take an AMD GPU and you pair it with an AMD CPU, that you're gonna get better performance. That's not true. The fact of the matter is, as long as your GPU is not being bottlenecked by a CPU that's too slow, whether it be Intel or AMD, your GPU is gonna to perform to the potential at which it can perform. What a lot of people are typically confusing is the idea of game development and subroutines, where either AMD engineers or Nvidia engineers will dump a bunch, of, a bunch of money into the development of a game to leverage their particular technologies, whether it be something specific to AMD or something specific to Nvidia. And then what happens is as those particular GPUs are recognized by the game, they run a whole different set of routines than the competitor. So that's why you're gonna probably see a bigger variance in performance between the game title than the CPU itself. In fact, you might see a lot more AMD logos on games moving in the future because of next gen consoles and with the rise in popularity of the Ryzen CPU. So that myth may end up changing in the future to where games just run better on AMD. Now this next one's one that tends to make my head hurt just a little bit, and that's the idea that installing more RAM will make your PC faster. That myth is entirely false because we all know you have to download more RAM for your PC to be faster. Now as long as PCs have been around, it's something you've inevitably heard at least once, and that is if your computer is running slow, you need more memory. Well, that's a half truth, because depending on what your PC is doing and whether or not it's RAM limited will determine whether or not adding more RAM will actually make it faster. So as long as you have enough RAM for the tasks that you're performing on your PC, adding more will do absolutely nothing for your system. Now this next one's one that a lot of people tend to forget about when selling their computer, and that is, well, if I just format my hard drive, then all my data's gone and nobody can look at my stuff. That's not true. In fact, the only way to get rid of every bit of data or byte of data, whatever you want to call it, is to absolutely destroy the hard drive. That is why many government hard drives and very sensitive hard drives that come out of sensitive uh, locations and companies and firms usually will send them off to companies that will completely destroy them and then send the drive back to the company. Sometimes it's fun just to take like a 30-06 and just shoot one. And even then, they can still sometimes get some data off of it. Now this is one that I have personally had people say to me on this channel. And that is, why are you putting such a big power supply on there? Putting a bigger power supply on your computer is gonna damage it because the computer can't use all that power or it's pushing more power than the parts can use. That's, do I even need to say that that one's false? Power supplies don't push power. Computer parts draw power. 
and there's a maximum draw available based on the power supply that you use. Now, the reason why I use bigger power supplies than people often think that I need, for instance, I'll run a thousand watt power supply on a single graphics card, nominal CPU system that's not running a ton of hard drives is because of efficiency curve. It's uh, pretty common if you look at the efficiency curve of a power supply that it's most efficient between 50 and 70% utilization of its max power output. So to keep things as efficient and as cool as possible with my power supplies, I tend to oversize them. Sometimes it's a waste of money, but I'm not hurting anything. So this next one is one that's only kind of been around for the last couple of years when it comes to, well, I don't know, things becoming a little bit more normalized with PC tech. And that is that solid state drives don't live as long as hard drives. Well, Phil actually said that one's plausible. So the reason why Phil says that this one's considered plausible is because yes, as I just said, there is a finite amount of read writes available to an SSD before it starts to degrade. That's just the way NAND works. Hard drives though, on the other hand, are also much more fragile. They're not uh, very friendly with magnets, another way you can destroy data like we were kind of talking about earlier. Um, they're also not very friendly when it comes to shock. And by shock, I don't mean like electricity, I mean sudden impacts and things like that. It is a platter that is spinning with a, what, what's the needle called? The needle thing. Oh, uh, it's got a pointy doohickey that basically reads the data off the right platter. Head. Yeah, the head. So SSDs, although much more durable, do have a limited amount of lifespan. Are you gonna reach that lifespan? Probably not. Now this next one here, Luke at Linus Tech Tips actually disproved already. And that is that having too many cables or bad cable management inside your system will decrease its airflow and therefore overheat your system. That's not true. In fact, what testing has constantly shown is that air in equals air out. And that unless you have complete solid blockages, the round cables, and even though they're all clustered together, is no more restrictive than trying to blow air through a bush. It's kind of like you're not moving enough air for it to make a difference. And as long as you have air flow, the PC will stay nice and cool. What's more important actually is the balance of the airflow though, whether or not you have positive pressure, negative pressure, or neutral pressure. And at the risk of sounding like a Linus Tech Tip shill, they actually did a really great one year explorational piece where they tested that theory and they compared all the difference of dust buildup in three systems that ran in those configs for a solid year in a dusty warehouse. You guys can go and find the link on your own. I'm not, let's face it, I don't put links down below, I always forget. Now this next one is one where it's kind of got multi parts to it and that is that leaving your computer on all night is bad for it. You see, it really kind of depends on how much memory you have, kind of coming all the way back to that memory thing where there's something on your computer called a page file. And that is every time it goes to sleep or hibernates, it has to store everything your computer was doing in an easy to access file so that when it wakes up again, it can load everything back. And that all gets stored in RAM. In fact, we should probably do a piece one day on how to modify your page file, how big or small it is. But the myth is also stating that by leaving your computer on all night or all day is actually better for it. Well, that's not always the case. Kind of tying back to some of these other myths. If you have inadequate cooling and it's sitting there hot all night, you could be causing some degradation or just general slowdown to where you come back to it in the morning and try and do your general tasks. Well, it's nice and slow because of the fact that it's overheating. I've also found that turning your computer off at night is just generally good for it because why leave your computer on all night wasting energy doing nothing? There's no reason for it. At least put your computer to sleep or hibernate if you're gonna be going, leaving it on all night but I also found that most often the points of failure in a computer tend to happen when you power it on. Turning on the computer for some reason seems to be the trigger for some components to die, whether or not the, whatever the reason is behind that, I'm not sure, but recommended leaving your computer on, but it's recommended to turn your computer off when you're not using it because of the environment. And for this last myth, overclocking your computer can reduce its lifespan. Wait a minute, something feels weird. That myth is actually sorta of true. Okay, here's what happens when you overclock your parts. You're obviously running it outside of its manufacturally specified perimeters, whether it be more voltage or faster core or both. The lifespan of a CPU in the manufacturing process of silicon today has become so good that a CPU that would last 10 plus years at factory settings when overclocked to its maximum performance and max stability might shave 10, 15% off of its lifespan, making it now an eight and a half to a nine year long processor, making it last long enough to definitely be no longer relevant to modern tech, but not to the point to where you're probably gonna kill it. What tends to kill processors is too much voltage. So I say it's sort of a half truth because you have to be smart about the way you overclock it, 
but at the same time, you have to be realistic on what you want to get out of your computer. Our max overclocks that we run around here are not the max overclocks achievable by their processors, but the max stable overclock that we're comfortable pushing it at. Let's face it, most people upgrade their systems at around the five year mark. And if you could have had a CPU run 10 years and now it's running eight at maximum overclockable performance, you really didn't change anything in the long picture, the long, the big picture when it comes to things. What you might notice over time is a slight degradation of the silicon, which means what is achievable today might not be achievable in a year or two. Both Phil and I have experienced PCs to where we've overclocked them to the point where after a year or two, we've had to drop them maybe 100 megahertz and add another 50 millivolts of voltage to get it stable once again. But the fact is we're still running it overclocked outside of the specified perimeters and they're not dead. In fact, I've only killed one processor in the uh, lifespan of this channel in seven years, and that was actually an AMD FX processor, which was kind of not the most overclocking friendly in terms of long-term use, but that's kind of besides the point. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video where we just kind of had some fun talking about some PC MIPS. I am going to be heading to Camarocon literally this weekend by the time you guys are watching this. So if you guys are in the Vegas area and you want to come out and just see some general cool ass car sh whether it be road racing, autocross, drag racing, it's at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway after all, um, and my car on the dyno run at 10 a.m. on Saturday, then feel free to come on down there. There's general mission passes available at the gate. More than a thousand cars showing up that we know of. Everything from stock classics that have been restored all the way to seven second quarter mile dragsters. So if you guys want to bring the family down to the Las Vegas area, the weather's going to be great, then go and find me. I've got a tent somewhere with my car. And um, that's not a myth. That's true. I'll be there, actually. I'll probably do some social stuff, too. So if you don't want to go, you can kind of check it out on, on Instagram or Twitter. But being there is much better, trust me. So anyway, if you think we missed some myths that are really important and you want people to know that these myths need to be debunked, do me a favor. Comment down below with your favorite fake PC myth so other people can learn. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. I feel like I just myself. <laughs> <laughs>